What's up, everyone? My name is Dylan Walker for Yahoo Esports. We are here at Call of Duty XP. I've got Laser here from Splice. How are you doing? I mean, your team is doing very well, top three. Uh, how are you feeling about Call of Duty XP? This has been a fantastic experience. I, I was just saying earlier to somebody that what's really cool about this is we've gotten to the point where if we're going to be here for 10 or 12 hours, you're not expected to sit in your seat and just watch esports for 12 hours. There's so much more to do, trying out the new game. There's booths outside. They have a zip line. They have paintball. And I think that's really cool. It reminds me of like the festival uh, music circuit where when you go, you go to see great music, but you also go to have like an experience enjoying with your friends and having a good time outside of just sitting and watching. Um, and I think I would love to see more events like this. I know DreamHack does this really well uh, as well. Um, like I said, I would just I think they executed really well on this, and I hope we do more of this across the industry. Awesome. So I want to talk to you since I've got an owner with me. I don't usually get to talk to owners that much. Um, I mean, I want to. You guys used to be. You weren't always Splice. You were uh, FE before this, right? right? And I mean, like, where? Why the rebrand? Number one. So we were originally a, a website, right? And the, the goal was to be, well, we're going to have all these listings for esports, and that was our focus. Picking up a team was actually a marketing effort. Um, if you recognize the whole Kingwin picked up a Counter-Strike team, renamed it, we thought, hey, work for Kingwin. Maybe it'll work for us. And we did pick up a Counter-Strike team. Um, what happened, though, is I was like, well, maybe we'll pick up a few more teams, and then we pick up some Smash players, and then we have a Warcraft team, et cetera. And it's funny, it took us until about two months ago to fully realize we're not really a web product anymore. We're a full-fledged pro team. You know, We always treated it as like almost two products, if you will, put tons of resources into both. But we've come to the point where we finally realized like we're a top 10 North American uh, esports team who has great presence in Europe. And we now have a Mexican uh, Gears of War team as well. So now we have the Latin American presence. Like That's our focus. That's where our resources go. Um, so the, specifically, the rebrand you're talking about was a moment of us going, if I'm a fan of a team, I might not be so proud to say I'm a follow esports fan. It's not really an exciting thing. So when we rebranded, it was really about like you want your fans and your players to feel proud to wear a jersey like this. Like when they go on stage, they've got a great looking logo. They got a great brand to feel excited to, to represent. Uh, so how many teams do you have right now currently across all games, all regions? So we're on seven teams now. Uh, we have a top, the top uh, two uh, European LCS team as well as the number one Call of Duty team in Europe, which is why we're here. Uh, we have the, the number one undisputed uh, Gears of War team in Latin America. Uh, they're 10-0 undefeated in the last 10 games, um, headed to the first big event in that circuit. Uh, and then North America, our Overwatch team is uh, in the top five. They made E-League, so we're really excited about that. Uh, we have one Hearthstone player, The Rat, uh, who's regularly one of the major deck builders out there. He makes a, a lot of us, uh, changes to how the scene works in the metagame. Uh, then we have MACD and Nintendo, who are both top uh, top 25 Smash players, um, and then of course our Counter Strike team, the first truly international uh, team. Uh, we have five players, all from different regions, and it's kind of exciting because it's that's what esports is, right? It's a truly global phenomenon, and and you know we've seen little bits of people pulling from other regions. We now truly have taken some of the best from all different regions in the world. Did you guys ever have like a big break kind of deal? Like, was there anything that ever kind of propelled you even further into like the esports space? In terms, is it like? I think people, the, the whole idea here is that a lot of people want to be involved. Like a lot of people want to be grow their own orgs and start their own programs and stuff. Um, and I just, could you tell them in your own words, like, is it about results? Is it about fan outreach? Like, what really helps you get these things rolling? So uh, there's a few things to that question. It's not a simple thing. Um, I would say our big break was definitely the LCS team, right? So when Dignitas put that out there, I remember, we, you know, we're, we're not a mass money team like uh, Immortals or NRG or Echo Fox or something, but we do have some investors behind us. And we, I said to the investors, look, this is an opportunity. They always asked us, what's that one thing that's gonna t take you a giant step instead of slowly climbing? And I said, this is it, okay? And so we went through a long process of teaching them what it meant to get an LCS team, how it differentiates you in the industry. And they eventually said, this is a great move. We wanna do this. So that, that kind of helped us uh, jump to the next level and get us the exposure uh, of being an elite brand, I guess you'd say. Um, as far as like how do you kind of separate from the pack a, a, over in a more like tangible way than just going out and buying an LCS slot, um, I think really it's our professionalism. So um, I, I, I preach very heavily at our organization that we're going to always be the most professional organization we can in esports. I mean, we're, a lot of us are much older. I'm 37. That's ancient for esports. Um, and I've worked a lot throughout the world. So I try to bring a lot of my, my age, I guess, if you will, to esports instead of going on Twitter rants or things like that. Um, also, uh, the way we engage with fans is really, really um, something I, I pride myself with. 
I tell them, uh, until we're so big, we can't answer every single YouTube comment and every single Twitter response and every single Facebook. We're going to do that, you know? There's a guy here who I met at NLG Anaheim, and he came up to me again, and we had a 20-minute chat again. And I want to take that time to talk to that guy because he's a really great fan of Splice right now, and that hopefully he's going to be a fan for life because of that. That's how you build build true fandom, put out great content, make sure our players are, are you know, accessible when we're at events, doing meet and greets, um, you know, stopping to talk to that fan that went by, even just giving him a high five, do, you know, having uh, an ability to be a fan in a 360 experience, I guess you'd say, as opposed to just watch the games, cheer for us, and see you later. I understand that. All right, so what is the incentive to invest in Call of Duty? Uh, massive growth space. So if you look at any other game uh, that's on a uh, PC basis, like let's take League of Legends or Counter-Strike, almost all people who play those games know esports exists. Whether they watch it or not is another question, but they know it exists. Call of Duty, what is it, 5%, 10% of players know it exists because it's in a very segmented space. It's a massive player base, like one of the biggest player bases the there world. is. Yeah, so let's say we even double that to 15 to 20% of the audience. We're all of a sudden going to be one of the biggest esports around. And so it's not out of the realm of possibilities for us to be selling out stadiums in a year, you know, whereas that's a little bit farther fetched for games like Counter-Strike and, and uh, League of Legends legends on a regular basis sure they do it for worlds and sure they do it for like the major but it's a couple times a year call of duty has that potential that if we can reach a large audience which we're doing with things like in-game items now which is a great opportunity you turn on your console go oh that that skin is really cool what is that esports i'm going to check that out and all of a sudden we fill up you know a 30 40 000 seat stadium because the player base is in the tens of millions right uh so last question are you going to stick around for snoop dogg and wiz khalifa I actually made a tweet after it was announced that I was so thankful that they had an old man rapper for an old man like me, because I'm a Snoop Dogg fan from back in the days of when uh, the first album came out. You know, I, I have that, that CD, not that those are really relevant anymore, from back in uh, 1994. Yes, I was in high school then. That, again, that's how old I am for esports. So I am as amped as I can be. Last time I saw Snoop Dogg was at the Apollo in Harlem. So yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm old school, right? Right on. All right, well, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. For sure. For everybody else, this is Yahoo Esports.